All right, guys, we're talking about Ashimar here today. It's an interesting little unit. It has some solid mid to long range damage, an excellent ability with the napalm and uh, the best mobility in the game. Technically, with its flight, the best vertical mobility in the game for sure. So um, it has a really unique potential to do little sneaky things as you're about to see. I wouldn't recommend like one tricking it by any means, but there's a lot of little sneaky things you can do, like I said. I will let you just get kills you really shouldn't be able to get. So if I was playing from main here, I wouldn't be able to I would not have been able to get this GM sniper. But um, coming from a flank here lets me do it. So I'm basically pretending to be a Zaku for a second. And um, lets me secure a really, really good positioning in this sort of position. I'm hitting a hard flank on the enemy um, where they can't do anything about me. And now they're sucking the complete open. My team is on the other side. I'm on the enemy side of things. So I'm taking a more aggressive situation position, which is actually more dangerous, but that's OK. Um, as long as I understand that there's a good chance that I can have someone flank me. So I'm holding this position because enemies come through the middle a lot. But as you can see, um, I do go and check to see if anyone's there every now and then. And just like that, RX 78 flanked me. So you got to keep on your toes with that sort of thing. And uh, look for them. Ashimar is also really good at playing against um, shields because your napalms are really good for against them. So keep that in mind. In a situation like this, so you see me a lot in this gameplay like fly up and basically play like I'm Farah for a second. Um, it's really good for scouting. It's really good for a lot of things. You just got to keep in mind that you can't just do it willy nilly. You're going to end up dying a lot. And if you see a GM sniper, like I do, it's time to dip. As you can see, I do two things in this situation. I one, well, three things. Go up one, <laughs> two important things for defending myself. I see him. I know I lose this this fight. It will not. Um, you don't beat a GM separate range, especially in the air where you're really predictable. So first thing I start dropping immediately. Second thing is I turn to move my head away from where I can see it. If he hits me now, he's only going to do uh, I think it's 450 damage with a body shot. Um, and so I fly away. And then recontest into the high ground. I end up chasing this this GM sniper. Um, hopefully I can get it before it heals itself, but he hides and sneaks up on me and hits a really nice shot onto me in the face. Ooh, ouch. Unlucky me. Nice job them. So um, something that's really, really important to understand about this map in particular is that the further out you go, um, the more you are going to have to take, the more time it takes to get to the objective. So on a map like C, that basically means there's only one fight that's going to happen on it. As a side note, this high ground is the most advantageous spot on C. Make sure you're contesting it. Make sure you're getting it. If this Pale Rider and RX-78 are let to just stand here, we're probably going to lose this fight. Um, assuming there's more than two people here, which I believe there were, but I don't know for sure. Anyway, if we don't contest them, we could potentially lose. But we do. We take care of them. Um, so here we have really amazing sight lines. We can toss my our napalm into any of these chokes I go through. We're sitting pretty. But back to how this game mode works. If when we kill this enemy here, these enemies here, they're going to take about 20 seconds to be able to get like an actual legitimate fight here again if they were to group up. And that includes us not staggering any of them, which is a very likely potential. Um, and so what we're looking at is them getting back at 20 seconds remaining or fewer 20 to 50 seconds. And by then the fight's going to take 10 seconds and they're going to even if they beat us, they're going to get five. Um, only get five little percentages out of it or five like seconds of it. So that's why C is super, super, super valuable to take, because if you don't take it, you basically lose the whole thing. As a side note, I go for a little punch here. Um, just a limit test to see what I can do. End up missing it. And I end up, I thought I hit the pill rider because I saw like a hit marker, I believe, but he ends up, um, I did hit something when I hit, I just don't think I stunned him, but end up getting caught out because of that and I die. But as you can see here, they're about to take it, but they're going to get like, or they've taken it, but they're only getting a small amount on it. So it's not worth it, especially because it gives them, it gives us advantageous positioning now. So I'm holding the high ground. Um, I end up not 
taking this duel very well and I lose to the Pale Rider, which guaranteed or granted Ashimar does lose to Pale Rider. But I forced the Pale Rider to contest me and if I'd played it better, um, I could have just poked him a little bit and then dodged out and made him use his heal, re-engage him, something like that. The point is, high grounds are super advantageous in these situations and you don't want to let them have them for free, which is why I was there in the first place. I'd like to see myself go back into the high ground um, and, and duel whatever is up there, but I don't want to let people flank behind me here. Um, so either I should be in the high ground or I should just go for a flank. So I'm in the high ground. I'm contesting whatever's up here. That's a setup. Um, Pell Rider. I don't really want to mess with that. So I, I dip away and then I go for the flank. On this map in particular, there's a really, really easy flank here in the left. So you got to think about, do I want to flank or do I want to let them flank me? So honestly, it's better just to flank them. I should have done it a little while ago already. Someone in our team should have and I can do it. So I should just go do it. They think they have an advantage. Now's a really good time to push. Sneak behind, put some damage in. And I end up getting pulled up by Anazaku, which is actually on our side. So he was flanking too. But um, yeah, you also lose Azaku at close range. And he kills me, but I end up getting rezzed and I bought enough time for our player to come help me with Azaku. So things are looking pretty good. I like to fly up like this. Um, and I always like to stick close to buildings because it's harder for enemies to see me and I can control the angle better. But people are always standing here and they're frequently walking through that choke. It was a really good spot for me to go up above them, put some damage in, throw an napalm. Um, that's a really good, really good situation for that. Which is what I'm trying to do here, but I'm not like just doing it like brainlessly because if I do, I'm going to die frequently. I have to be really careful about that in particular. And then we run away from Barbatosis because they are scary. I think I end up dropping down in the middle here. I don't like this. I wish I'd gone to a safer spot in the high ground. Um, yeah, I'm basically just standing out in the middle. Like, if you look at this section of the map, it's just so open. There's not a lot of cover. You need to control these high grounds or one of them at least and contest the other one. I'm doing that right now and um, we're getting a lot of value out of this. But if I wasn't, which I wasn't for a second and someone was up there, then they're taking it. I don't even contest it. They burn down my team maybe and we have like a neutral fight at this point and we don't get a free win. So for Ashimar, make sure that you're playing your sight lines because you lose to closer range characters like Pale Rider. Control high grounds as much as possible. They're really advantageous to you and you can take them easily. Um, I would save your punch for shield enemies because that's how you, the only way you can beat them really. Granted something with like a, like a GM, maybe you can burn to death because burns do go through shields, but um, definitely not like a Sazumi. If you like some more Ashimar information, make sure to check out my Ashimar guide. I talk about when to play the character, how to play, strengths and weaknesses, and the abilities in a nice short little video. So make sure to check it out, guys. It's great. Thanks, guys.